This summer, bills have been rising. Our bank balance hasn't been rising. But at the end of the day, the whole must go on. Woof Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka the Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Now I can't lie, this summer started off great for me with the books that I picked up because I had a pre-order that had been going on for about 10 or so months and it was Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1. They had this for an insane price thanks to some kind of glitch that was going on and then they cancelled me order because I paid with PayPal and at the same time I didn't know if they'd end up sending this to me or if they'd get enough stock of it. But I'm glad that my patience paid off, this is one of my favourite comic book events of all time. So I'm glad that I finally managed to get my hands on this and go for about 20% of the cover price. However, I am still under quite a tight budget because of how quickly everything's rising in price. But one of the first books that I knew I needed to get my hands on, regardless of any budget that I had, was Volume 4 of The Hulk by Peter David. But I am so glad that I've got this in my collection. It seems like this pretty much rounds out the main part of his run. So I can now comfortably at least know that this is something that's boxed off, even if I know there are going to be subsequent volumes coming out. And I remember how stupidly out of print Volume 1 went, and I know that people are still waiting for that Volume 2 restock that's coming up in January, and if you did already want to pre-order that or pick up any other books, you can get them from the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services, and if you use code woof woof, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code woof woof, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below, and you can use these codes as many times as you like. But there were also a few other books that were coming out around this time, and it seemed like I wasn't really going to be able to stick to the budget that I'd set for myself. However, thanks to books, etc., pretty much having a 50% off the majority majority of DC books, I did manage to get my hands on the question volume 1. Now I don't know a lot about this character except for the appearances that I saw in 52, but I am really interested in this and it was a bit of a blind buy which I am trying to minimise at the minute. I do hope that they come out with a volume 2 soon because it is something that I'm only really willing to jump into when the series is finished, and I know it finished years ago, I mean in the omnibus format. But I just love the fact that DC is printing these more obscure titles that aren't really in the public knowledge. It gives me hope that maybe they are going to continue doing that with something like maybe Garth Ennis's Hitman series and I can't wait until I eventually jump into this and I'm just glad that I managed to pick it up. Another DC book that I picked up from Books Etc which wasn't a blind buy and I knew I needed was The Catwoman of East End. This was one of those books that I had a few trade paperbacks of when I was first getting into comics and I absolutely love this. I think this might have even been the introduction into Ed Brubaker and Darwin Cook. This is a phenomenal run which in all honesty I probably would have bought even if it came out in absolute edition. I cannot wait to jump back into this and piece together the gaps that I had when I was reading it originally. And again, hopefully it's a sign that DC is going to come out with more things from the Bat family. Maybe they do a Birds of Prey by Gail Simone. Or, and this might be wishful thinking, a Nightwing by Chuck Dixon. Either way, I'll take whatever they give me and I'm glad that this got released. I thought it was going to get cancelled, but it seems like DC is getting much better with that now. So I'm very happy that this cat is entering the dog pound. I then picked up a few Marvel books that I didn't manage to get on the week that they were released and I knew that I needed to get them eventually. The first of which is the Thunderbolts Volume 2. Now I'm very excited that we're getting a volume 3. That is some of the material that I read when I was first getting into comics. But this is kind of uncharted territory for me. It's the stuff that I never read before. But I do love the team. I love some of the very early issues of this. It's just that I never really carried on with it. And especially with it being announced that they're going to get their own film in the MCU when it looks like they're not really carrying over any of the characters that are actually in the series. I can't wait to just jump into this. It does look like volume 1's now gone a bit out of print, which we did talk about in Whale Watch. Which, yep, has also made a comeback, but again, it's going to be seasonally. Seasonally? Is that even a word? Seasonal? I don't know. But yeah, I did worry that this would go out to print as well, so as soon as I did have a bit of a gap in the budget, I made sure that I allocated it towards this. And that's kind of what I wanted to highlight with these hauls on a budget, it's that you can still get the books that you want, it's just that sometimes you have to be a bit tactical with it. However, in saying that, a book that I knew that I really wanted, but other people didn't really, is going to be Thor by Matt Fraction. Yep, I'm disappointed that this got an omnibus before the run that he did on Iron Man, which I recently filmed a review for, so make sure you look out for that one. And yes, I admit this isn't the perfect Thor run, but it's got a lot of nostalgia for me. It does also include Fear itself, which is an event that I'm not really a massive fan of, but I would love to go back to and give it a second chance, even if some of the tie-in issues for that are absolutely fucking awful. But I'm just glad that this book exists, and I really hope that Marvel gets a move on and prints an expanded edition of the JMS Omnibus, and also includes stuff like Siege and the one that's done by Kieran Gillen. I know there's a lot of people asking for that one, and I think it's something that needs to happen. And another book that I probably panic bought a little bit, but I know I couldn't really sit 
sit around on it much longer is Star Wars The Empire Volume 1. Now I thought I'd have a couple more months before I needed to pick this one up but then I saw what happened with The Old Republic and I just wasn't taking any chances. Now don't get me wrong, I know that Star Wars is pretty much a license to print money. I'm hoping that this is better than Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters which I reviewed recently. But it seems like it's set between episodes 3 and 4 which is a time period that I really enjoy looking at and either way more Star Wars in my collection is never really going to be a bad thing. And it was around this time that Marvel just seemed to push back a lot of the schedule which meant that I had a lot more of my budget available. So I decided to upgrade Mood of Falcon and pick up the Deluxe Edition. I've only read this once but I absolutely love it and it's one of those titles that I could just easily jump back into again. And just the production value of this book is great as well for something that's so cheap. Don't get me wrong, it's not the thing that's blown me away most in this video, we will get to that in a minute. But this is a book that I just think everybody should check out and the less that you know about it the better. Another image book that I wanted to get my hands on quickly was the Curse Words Omnibus. Now it says Omnibus but this is smaller than a deluxe edition but either way it was something that I wanted. I know that this started originally as a Kickstarter and I didn't know if it'd be around for much longer and I didn't really want to take my chances with it. There was a lot that I enjoyed when I reviewed his run of Daredevil and often when I've read someone's Marvel work I then like jumping into some of the creator own stuff and seeing what they can do with that freedom. So this is something that I'm very excited to have in my collection but I don't really know a lot about it. Then Shadowcat was kind enough to get some gifts for me because we passed 10,000 subscribers on the channel. I'm going to do a special live stream later on this month to celebrate now that the temperatures have dropped a bit so I'm not going to burn to death with all the lights on but the first book that she gifted to me was the Once and Future Deluxe Edition. Now this is the proper size and it's one of those titles that I've had my eyes on since issue 1. If this is half as good as the Power Rangers stuff that they bring out then I know that I'm going to have a good time. And Kevin Gillen wrote one of my favourite series with Darth Vader so I'm not really in any doubt with his talent. Another book that she picked up for me is Primordial by Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. She found out about this book because she watched my Green Hour review and I talked about how much I enjoyed this creative team but I know nothing about this book and I'm very excited to jump into it. If I love the stuff that they've done for Marvel and DC then I have no doubt that I'm going to like what they do when they've got absolutely no creative restraint. This looks great and I'm glad that she found this for me. Although the gifts didn't stop there because we did have our anniversary a few weeks ago and the way to my heart is through buying me comics so she picked me up the Decorum Deluxe Edition. She knows I'm a big fan of Jonathan Hickman but this was just one of those titles that I never really got round to. I'm glad that this has finished and it's got its own hardcover because this does look beautiful. Again, I know zero about this going into it but I love a lot of image titles and yeah, I might have been a bit 50-50 on East of West which was an opinion that didn't really go down that well with some people but I loved his Fantastic Four run, the stuff that he did with the Avengers and the Secret Warriors. So I'm very excited to get round to this and I'm just glad that she got this for me. She then also got me a trio of books because of the fact that I did that video where I talked about the 100 greatest graphic novels. So she was kind enough to get me before the Incal, the final Incal, and the one that I've seen absolutely nothing but rave reviews about, the Incal. Now I've got absolutely no excuse to not jump into this series, it's one that I have always wanted to start, I just didn't know where I could. And obviously with there being so much prestige behind these, I always wanted to make sure that I was in the right mindset. But this might be the start of a very dangerous slope, I might end up getting everything that these guys have ever published. So I'm appreciative of the gift, but this might be something that ends up costing me more in the long run. Now I mostly got her a few non comic -y things, stuff like the Steelbook edition of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, but one that I knew that she needed to round out this set was The Rose of Versailles Volume 5. These are gorgeous books and even though I'm not a manga guy, it's something that I can appreciate the quality of. I've heard nothing but good things about it, so hopefully she enjoys reading it as well. She also got Volumes 5 and Volume 6 of Monster. Fortunately I got these from Travelling Man when we visited York, which is why you should always support local comic shops, because they had a great 3 for 2 sale on, which meant that I could get another volume or something. And that's something ended up being Fist of the North Star Volume 5. Shadowcat did also get me Volume 4 at the beginning of this season, but for such cheap books they don't really skimp out on the quality. These feel sturdy, they look great, and it looks like a lot of these covers actually connect with each other. Which is also something that Monster does, which is why I needed to get the rest of this series. It's really bugging me that we have gaps in it and that I can't finish out this picture. But as you guys might know, there is one thing that I love more than absolutely anything. And apologies to anybody that might know me in my real life, I do mean more than anything, and that's Power Rangers. But unfortunately Hasbro isn't the kindest company if you're working to a budget. So when Comics and Cocktails had a half price sale on some of the sets, I was more than happy to finally pick up my Zeo Pink. I do not need an extra Mighty Morphin Pink Ranger, you've already printed this about 7 times. I did need this character though to finish out the Zeo set. You want money, I get it, you're a company, but can you at least try and be a little less obvious with it? But fortunately like I said when Comics and Cocktail did have half price off, I could justify this because I was pretty much paying the price for one figure and it means that my Zeo team looks a little bit more complete which is one of the only things that 
really makes me happy anymore. I did also buckle and pick up the blue in space ranger in silver psycho ranger. One of my favorite power rangers teams of all time. There was no way that I wasn't going to complete this. Even though it is getting really difficult to find just like a standard in space silver. If anybody has any connections, please let me know. Even if I have to kind of do some dodgy back alley sale just to get one. I need a Zane in my collection. The final power ranger that entered the collection over this season was the wild force lunar wolf. This is one of my favorite teams. I think aesthetically it's my favorite to look at. But yeah, Shadow Cat got me this as well. So I do have to say thanks to her. And she also managed to find me one that was correct. There were a lot of these that only had five stripes or white boots. And that's just something that really would have bugged me. One of the last couple of books that I picked up for myself because I really wanted to make sure that I was completing series where I could is the Fables Compendium Volume 4. I am very excited that this is now in my collection. At the minute, I'm doing something where it's like a full retrospective of Vertigo Comics. And I feel like this is one of those titles that's kind of been forgotten a little bit since it finished. I can't wait to just dive in and read the full like 150 issues or whatever it is. And I'm also just glad that they didn't change the spines last minute so that they all line up. But yeah, don't be surprised if you see me doing a review of this next year. Another book that there was no way that I was missing out on was TMNT The Last Ronin. Now it's a funny story with me in this title because when I was first getting into YouTube, I wasn't really finding my feet that well. And I just did like a little throwaway gimmicky video where it's like, what is the odds it's going to be each turtle? And I had so much fun making that. I uploaded it and it debuted like 10th out of 10. So it really didn't do well out the gate, but then all of a sudden it just picked up quite a bit of use. This was like the first indication that maybe I was doing something right and it just really gave me a bit of confidence to go forward with this. I did also read the first issue and the second issue and then I could not be bothered to wait all that time. So now that it's complete, even if yes, it is just a normal deluxe edition, whereas I really wanted some kind of absolute volume, I am so excited that this is finished, it's in my collection and spoiler alert, I've already read this. Yeah, I'm scripting the review as we speak so this is something that I'm going to talk about a lot more in an upcoming video. Now I have quite a soft spot for art books and I also have a massive soft spot for the Batman film that came out earlier this year. But Shadow Cat saw that I was looking at this book a lot, so she surprised me with The Art of the Batman. I love this book. I've already read through it once. I just love all the notes from the creators, the directors, all the things that they contemplated doing, but then realized they wouldn't fit in with the world. This is exactly the book that I wanted. I also got the 4K steelbook of this movie, and each time I've watched it, I've enjoyed it even more. And I hope I don't lose that enthusiasm for it the longer that it goes on, because I'm still really tempted tempted to buy that Hot Toys, and yes, I'm taking donations if anybody does want to surprise me with it. I'll even send you feet pics if it's going to make sure that I get that Hot Toy. Yeah, I'm that desperate for it. But this is a phenomenal book, and if you like this film, and you just love looking at what goes on behind the scenes, then this is one that you need to pick up. Because all books go ridiculously rare once the hype for the films just died out. Trust me. And the last book that I picked up is one that I did not have on my radar at all, but then as soon as I saw pictures of it flooding me Instagram, I just knew that I need it. I have no idea how this book is this beautiful with this cheap of a cover price, but it's none other than the Treehouse of Horror Omnibus. When this first got solicited, for some reason I had it in my head that this was going to be a paperback, but my god is this a well put together book. It's glow in the dark, this is a cutout, it's got a slipcase, and it looks like a lot of these stories came out during the golden era of The Simpsons. Because let's be honest, we are not in that time now. It says that there's going to be three volumes of this, and if they're all as beautiful as this book, then yeah, I'm in for all of them. But I'm so glad that I saw people sharing this book, else I probably wouldn't have ended up getting it. And who knows, maybe next year when all the volumes are out, I might do a special review for Halloween. But for now, I'm just glad that I've got this volume, and I'm looking forward to where this is going. So that's my haul for summer, and for the most part, I did stick within my budget. I do really want to bring back the challenges that I used to do, so if you've got any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. But please bear in mind that I don't have infinite money. But hopefully you guys have had a good couple of months of picking up books, and until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof, see you at the next video.